All right, we're going to get started here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at circular motion, and we're going to look at it um, from a particular vantage point. So let's pretend this is an overhead view of a car driving. And the car is navigating a turn. Now what we can do is we can approximate any turn as a circle. We can give it a particular radius of curvature for some small portion of it. And so what we're going to say is we're going to look at this bit of a curve, right? I take some arc of a curve and it approximates to being a part of a longer circle. And while the car is going through that, be driving at a constant velocity, this follows the rules of uniform circular motion. We have this tangential velocity, tangent to the curve we're doing. I could erase the rest of the circle, and this is the curve we're coming on. And what we want to do is we want to provide the turning force. Now, that's generally done by friction between your tires and the road. What we're going to do here, though, is we're going to set up um, an optimal banking angle for a given speed. So the idea is if the road got wet, um, what would be the best angle to make the road at? So the car would get all of its turning from the normal force. And so we're going to exaggerate the banking of the road here. And let's put our car on the road. And so, the car's not going to be sliding up or down. Oops. So that was better. Give it an axis. We'll look at the y axis. It's my y axis. X axis. And we're going to make the normal force go in this direction. That's force normal. That's my normal force. And over here, I'll label this my X axis, my Y axis. Now, this is the forward if the car um, is coming towards you and that's the slope of the road it's the overhead of this this is the road itself so we're, we're starting to do something fairly three-dimensional here and we're doing it in small cross sections we're assuming this curve lasts for the road part and we're looking at how the curve supplies forces to the motion and so to make the turn there has to be an inward directed acceleration straight down the x-axis. And that's A sub R. There's still gravity. Which is going to have a force of mg. And what I'll do here is what we can do then is if there are no other forces if I am going at a speed so that there is no friction there's no sliding up or down well this is going to happen when the normal supplies all the forces that we need and so if we go at a particular speed um, at a sp particular angle the normal will supply everything and so first off, we're going to use parallel lines here for us. Not the Blondie album, but this line is parallel to this line. So this is angle theta. That means that if this is angle theta, this is my 90 degrees here. Um, and what we want to see is what component of this comes down. Well using our linked angles this 
is sine theta. And this is cosine theta. And this is going to help us because now I have two systems. I have an up-down system, which is an equilibrium. And I have a left-right system, which is an equilibrium because this is in uniform circular motion. This is going to make a circle where this is not going to go any further out due to the application of this inward acceleration. The only thing supplying it is the normal force. So if we look at that equation, what we're going to say is the mass of the car times the acceleration will be supplied by the normal force. But we know uniform circular motion is related like this. And so we have our x components. If we come over and look at our y components, right, I have an up-down equilibrium, so these are equal. So I can solve for f of n. Now, I'm not going to worry about plugging numbers in. I'm going to go right away and sub this over for f of m. So I get mg sine theta over cosine theta equals mv squared over r. The m's go away. And I get g tangent theta equals v squared over r, or the tangent of theta equals v squared over rg. And so if we have a slick surface, and we provide this angle, so I'll take the inverse tangent of both sides. This angle, if we build the road to this angle, there is a velocity we can lock it to. I'm going to say 30 miles per hour, right? 25 miles per hour. And this becomes the speed that you can drive that curve without needing friction. And we can add frictional components to it, which will change our equations. But we have a baseline angle that we can give where we can provide all the forces we need with no slipping.